Warning, the following content requires top 1% material such as rare jewels. You have been warned. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to quickly remind you guys that I'm still having a giveaway as a thank you. And there's two ways you can enter. The first is to simply click the Gleam link in the description. And you can also upload your funniest kill slash clip in Monster Hunter World and email the link to the video in the email that you see on screen, theyodosoda at gmail.com. It's going to be running for a few more weeks, so you still have a chance to enter, so don't miss out. Anyway, without other way, let's get into today's video. Today I'm bringing you guys three heavy bowgun sets for every occasion and for any type of heavy bowgun player. Yesterday marks the end of the Kul'Thra siege. Rest in peace. You will be missed. But not really, you stingy cunt. Anyway, let's get started with the first set of the day, which is a cluster bombing set I have for you guys. I mentioned in a previous video how I personally don't like cluster bombing, and while that remains true, I still wanted to bring you guys my set. For this one, we're going to be using the Dark Devourer, which is the Devil Joe HBG. This thing supports cluster 2 and 3, has negative 25% affinity, which doesn't matter at all since explosive ammo can't grip, and it has high deviation. This doesn't really affect your cluster, but if you ever choose to use the Wyvern Heart special ammo, know that it will be terrible to aim. For the mods, I opted for 3 reload assist to help out our cluster reload, although it mainly just affects 2. This thing also has 2 augment slots, in which I've opted for a health region and an attack increase. Now, I don't recommend you go for an affinity, because again, you can't really crit with your cluster bombs or your sticky ammo. But you can go for a second attack increase, since clusters do mainly scale off of your raw. I also mentioned in a previous video how I don't like health region on bow guns, and... That remains true, but this is the only exception because we are going to be running peak performance and clusters do hurt a lot per head so you can keep yourself pretty healthy in between your health booster cooldowns. The main ammo you're going to be using is sticky to damage and stun the monsters and then let them have it with a barrage of cluster bombs. The rest of the ammos are pretty irrelevant, but you still have spread three in there in case you... I don't know, feel like shooting it or something. For the armor, we're going to be using the Zinajiva headgear alpha spotted fucking spotted, slotted with an attack jewel. The chest is the Dover Mail, slandered with a Fearer jewel. The gauntlets are the Zenajiva Claws Beta, slandered with a Release jewel. The coil is the Zenajiva Coil, slandered with a Flawless jewel and another attack jewel. The boots are the Kirin Leg Guards Beta, slandered with two final attack jewels. And the charm is the Unscathed Charm 2. Let's see how many comments I get about four attack jewels this time. Anyway, as a whole, this would give you level 6 attack boost, level 3 ammo up, level 3 peak performance, bite resist, flinch free, both at level 2, one level of resentment, and special ammo boost. Now ideally, you would wear a rock steady mantle and a health booster with this set. You set up the booster and happily sit inside of it as you mortar things to death. It isn't the most fun playstyle for me personally, but it does do a lot of damage. It is a pretty viable option, so I get why a lot of people run it. I just, I personally don't like the like, situationalness of it and also the RNG reliance. Not just on the Xeno passive, monsters can behave unpredictably sometimes and uh, they can fuck up your shots or I don't know something random might happen now while you're sitting inside your health booster you'll probably be a hundred percent health most of the time but if you ever do get hit you have one level of resentment here to give you just a little bit more damage until you heal yourself back up to full so you'll always have something active and in increasing your damage output but the jewel slot where we slotted the resentment is a level three slot a spare level three slot so if you want to slot in a spread shot jewel since this bowgun does support spread three uh then you can go for it since i didn't mod it for reload or recoil i don't really ever do that uh because it's terrible for spread three on this gun but hey the option is there if you want it or if the situation presents itself where it might come in handy all right the second build i have for you guys today is a pierce focus build now prior to this i was using griffin blazooka and i never really liked it i don't know why but here we have a straight up upgrade in the form of the Terath assault support this thing has a level three jewel slot 20 percent base affinity no deviation plus 20 defense, one augment slot for which I've opted for an attack increase, but you can do whatever you want here, but I'd have it as a crit boost uh, or a slot upgrade, because you really won't need those. For the mods, I used a shield mod because it really does come in handy against things like the Diablos and two reload assists. But honestly, you can offer three reload assists if you want as well, because you won't really get the whole benefit off of having a uh, reload assist if you don't have three of them. Terror of the Salt support has Pierce 1, 2, and 3, Para ammo, and Wyvern ammo, which is really, really good. I slotted this thing out with a release jewel, for the armor, we're going to be using the Nergigante Helm Beta, slotted with two artillery jewels. The chest is the Kul'Taroth Iron Beta, slotted with a Mind's Eye jewel and a final artillery jewel. The gauntlet to the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, slotted with a spread shot jewel. The coil is the Nergigante Coil, slotted with a critical jewel. 
and the boots are Dante's leather boots slotted with two attack jewels, and the charm is the awakening charm too. As a whole, this would give you level 4 attack boost, level 3 ammo up, level 3 weakness exploit, level 3 artillery, two levels of stun resist, critical boost, and maximum might, pierce shot, and Mind's Eye. Now, Mind's Eye is going to help us stick a little bit closer to the monster to have the full damage of our pure shots. Since we don't really use stamina, we'll have about 95% crit chance thanks to maximum might, so you're going to crit pretty much every single time. We also have maxed out artillery, which increases the damage of our Wyvern ammo. I really like the up in damage for the Wyvern ammo, so I recommend taking artillery 3, but if you have spare attack jewels... <laughs> and you don't care about using Wyvern ammo too much, then you can replace them for uh, three attack jewels, and then you would have level seven attack boost. This bowgun also has Wyvern Heart as its special ammo, and since it has no deviation, you can be insanely accurate while shooting it, and it is so satisfying to do. Oh yeah. The best part is this thing holds so much freaking ammo. 8 pierce 3 and 12 pierce 2 is a lot of ammo, so you can spam away. Now remember, this doesn't have the Xeno set bonus, so because you have a lot of ammo, you might get a little too trigger happy and chew through all your ammo like really fast. So keep an eye on how much ammo you have and bring materials to craft pierce 3 and wyvern ammo on the go. This thing actually supports more ammo types that you can carry in your item pouch, so you really shouldn't ever realistically run out of ammo. Just make sure you brought useful ammo. <laughs> relevant to the hunt that you're currently on. Overall, this is a really good weapon, pretty much the only Pierce heavy bowgun I enjoy using, and it has a lot of CC options as well as flaming ammo, so it is a very powerful, versatile setup. And finally, the last heavy bowgun build I have for you guys today is another take on the Spread 3 set I uploaded the other day. A few days I uploaded a heavy bowgun video featuring the Terra Salt Horn, and everybody and their grandmother told me that the Glutton was better. But unfortunately, it wasn't until like two days ago that I actually got the Rarity 7 Glutton. Thank God. So now, I can bring you guys a set for it. First up, this thing has 10% affinity, average deviation, two augment slots, and wyvern snipe as its special ammo. For the augments, I opted for an attack increase and an affinity increase. For the mods, I went with three close range ups, but you can swap one of them for a shield. In all honesty, having one shield mod in here would actually go a long way, um, because you will pretty much be melee rage against the monster the whole time. Uh, you'll be in danger's way more often than not, so I'm gonna recommend that you do take the shield mod, because I have been cucked by not having it. Goddamn piece of shit. Can I please see my character model? Oh my, f I actually died, are you f Anyway, for the armor, we're gonna be using the Dragon King eye patch slotted with a release jewel. The chest is the Kultaroth Iyer Alpha slotted with an attack jewel. The beta are the Diablos Nero Braces beta slotted with a tenderizer jewel and an attack jewel. Coil is the Nergigante Coil beta slotted with an elementless jewel, which works on this bow gun since it doesn't have any elemental ammo. And the boots are the Lavasioth Greaves slotted with a critical jewel. And the charm, we're gonna be using the Awakening Charm too. As a whole, this would give you level four attack boost, level three ammo up, max out critical boost, Max out weakness exploit, level 2 stun resist, spread shot, a spare level of focus, and a non-elemental boost. Now, I've gotten a lot of comments regarding uh, free element up and non-elemental boost, and I just want to make this clear so that people aren't confused. The skill free element slash ammo up does two things, of course. The first one being that it releases the hidden element of a particular weapon when you have the skill on your set. The second thing that it does is that it increases clip size for a variety of different ammo types, and that varies from bowgun to bowgun. Most bowguns don't have any element attached to them. The way that you can see if they have an element attached to them is through their ammo. If they have an elemental type of ammo, that being thunder, water, ice, uh, fire, or dragon, then putting a non-elemental boost gem won't do anything because they do have elemental ammo. However, in a case like this, where the gun doesn't have any elemental ammo, it works. And it also works on the Terath Assault Horn, which is the reason why I did that. So the two skills don't cancel each other out. Uh, and again, 
That might be obvious to some people, but a lot of people had that question. Um, so I'm just addressing it here right now. Anyway, back to the build. That spare level of focus isn't even wasted because Wyvern Snipe is so good. You know, it'll help it come back just a tad bit faster. With level 3 ammo up, this thing can carry 8 bullets of spread 3 and spread 2. You'll have 75% crit chance, so you'll crit a lot, and your crits will do a lot with maxed out crit boost. This gun doesn't have a whole lot of ammo options, and it doesn't have Wyvern ammo, unfortunately, but you really only need spread 2 and 3. Again, remember, you do not have the Xeno bonus, so keep an eye on your ammo and bring materials to build some more on the go because you will chew through it pretty fast. Well guys, those are my top three heavy bowgun sets at the moment. I've actually enjoyed using the Glutton more than the Horn. Uh, I just, I didn't have it before, so it was pretty much the, the better one uh, that I had at that time. But I really do enjoy this. I do actually enjoy this one and the support. I don't really like cluster bombing again, but these are pretty good. I want to give a quick shout out to a channel called Janda Bear Gaming. Her vids uh, showed up on my recommended and they gave me some ideas for these sets. So head over to their channel and check them out. There are a couple that runs uh, some Monster Hunter videos and a couple other things. And I quickly want to remind you guys again, the giveaway is still running for a few more weeks. Check the description for details. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, now that the Kul Taroth event is over, tell me what was your bounty? What weapons did you get? Did you get anything good? I got a few. Not really uh, what I wanted, but you know. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.